It is Valentine's Day. It sure is, Brian. It really is. Yeah, it's nice. And love is in the air here on Fast Money, along with a bird. So that got us thinking about the most loved stocks on Wall Street. Now, these companies have the most amount of buy ratings in the S&P 500. Many names on your list. Amazon, Alphabet, Facebook, of course, are the ones that have the most analysts, so they would have the most ratings. But also names like Pioneer Natural Resources and Diamondback Energy, the original Fang are on this list. So are these names true love for investors? Or are we heading for a heartbreak? We're going to have debates on some of these names. Let's begin with Amazon. Most loved stock in the S&P, 45 buy ratings, zero sell ratings. Grasso, true love? Or a heartbreak? This is a heartbreak for me, and, I, and I've been wrong, because I thought this was going to be the investment cycle where the oh, stock sold oh, off. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, what was that? Oh, that's, an excellent, wow. that's an excellent sound right there. So, but it hasn't worked out yet. I do believe, though, it's going to get contentious between the White House and Bezos longer than it already has been. So I think ultimately this one will break your heart in the long run. I mean, I think that's a fair point for second half of the year, but I love the breakout in Amazon. When you're talking about a stock like this, momentum is what matters. So, yeah, this is a true love There's for me. Bird. The bird is tweeting that's again. That's the bird. I that's exactly. You. That's The graphic that is the a bird. Sign. When you've got, I, I agree on the technical side, you've got the double top in 18, 19, looks to be breaking out to the upside. And just from a fundamental perspective, you know. Say we got, it first, Jeff. True love. Say True it. love. Uh-huh. Idea. I love it. Um, but thinking about it from a fundamental perspective, you got uh, Michigan Consumer Confidence came out this morning. Good. Retail sales, solid. So overall, the consumer's still in a good spot. Technically, it looks good. So I think it goes higher. Okay. Let's switch now to Visa, which has 33 buy ratings and just one sell. Jeff, is the Visa trade, again, true love, which for some reason is represented by a bird sound, or a heartbreak? <laughs> yeah, true. I mean, true true love for me. I, I just, I like the payment space. If you look at global payments as an example, uh, you're at 43% of global payments ex-China are now digital. That's up from 28% 10 years ago. So I just like being in that space. I think these two names are positioned for it. Yes, you can argue that they're expensive relative to history, but you have revenue as well as EPS having doubled yeah. over the past five years. So I think there's still more room here. And and I think that, at least, Jeff, is where I have to find my heartbreak uh, Mm. in Visa. I I think if you look at the multiple. (laughs) Right. That's That's awful. Um, Everything about it's awful. It's horrible. Um, But if you look at Visa's multiple, it's not awful, um, but it's trading at a three-term premium to the three-year average. So we talk about uh, some of these payment stocks. There's no question that payments have re-rated. Visa Visa and MasterCard have been uh, heart uh, not break, what are we calling them? We're calling them true, true love. True love, love charts yeah. for every Valentine's Day for the last five. Uh, but when I look at the dynamics right now, at some point, first of all, incredibly competitive landscape. They are competing on multiple fronts. It's really a valuation call. Okay, Tim, let's stay with you. Let's do that. And take a look at some of the few energy names that actually made the list. Hard to believe, but some did. You got Diamondback Energy, the original Fang. Again, true love or a heartbreaker. Well, I think in the case of Diamondback with the ticker FANG, this is a definitely true love. Um, if you believe that, re- that the... Hmm. Yeah. You can't That's talk not, over yeah, the birds. You can't talk over the birds. Look, <laughs> what we're seeing there is free cash flow generation. We're actually seeing capital discipline. It's what we talk about with some of the better names uh, in the space. That You've actually seen this chart uh, begin to find a bottom. You found a place where I actually think management is running this company for equity investors. If you look at the street, actually, there's been a number of turns for the sentiment in the stock from the analyst community. There's a bunch of overweights in the stock, and I would join that with my uh, true love. Well, for me, it's a heartbreak. And this is less about the company. Tim makes a very good point about how the company, this is just a horrible sound. Who did that recording? Somebody on our team, Angwood Cliff. It's Guy. It's Guy. So anyway, so anyway, on on this, it's it's more about oil here, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. oil, the chart on oil looks terrible. The fundamentals in oil look terrible. So I don't want to be anywhere near that. I mean, we had a war in the Middle East and oil couldn't get out of its own way. So for me, it's a heartbreak, not a heartthrob. And we'll see this. There's talk. Talk out there. China could be down by three or four million barrels a day. All right, finally, Microsoft. Jeff, mm. it's been a true love. Still a true love? Listen, or a heartbreak. For me, it's a heartbreak, but let's be very clear. This is a near-term heartbreak. I think maybe you break up and then get back together sort of story. Uh, You can't argue with what management has done. The business is great. I think long-term, it's going to be a good buy. But at 30% above its 200-day moving average, I feel like it's more vulnerable than maybe some other names if the overall market has a bit of a problem via coronavirus or any other catalyst here in the near term. 
This has to be true love. I mean, when you look at this stock, it's unbelievable on a chart. It's broken out. This is about more cloud than it is about the old legacy business. This thing, I thought it was going to get to 185. The way it ripped through 185 the other day, I think it can get to 200 at this point. They're the other side of the Jedi contract. But I do believe that the near-term headlines are a near-term headwind. But I believe ultimately this thing will be higher. See, this says a lot about me, but I'm going to not play the game because I hate commitments. I wouldn't want to be committed to, to, you know, to a heartbreak or a true love on this one because this stock to me has been representative of absolutely a turn, certainly fundamental call, uh, a services revenue, a a cloud revenue that's very exciting. But it's been a market proxy. And again, I think getting married to that right now is something. Maybe it's just a crush for you. Maybe it's a crush. I have trouble committing sometimes. and It doesn't make me a bad. Great insight. and by, by the way, I think I figured it out that bird noise has got to be the agapornis. That is the better known as the love. And it could be why Tim. Better, right. known, right. better known as the, the love committed. bird. Better right. known as the love bird of a small parrot commonly found. How about John in, Paul uh, Young loves Madagascar? The air, by that's got to be that. That's Great what term. that is. I, I would imagine. Or it's the bird flying around. All right.